Today's January 25th. It's Friday. And today is the nonsense day of the and, and electric bill day. There's it's right there on the screen. That's a robot. It's robots and, and nonsense. Security. Oh, we have one design story, right? Oh yeah. We've, we've we've got lots of categories, but they're all kind of small. But we will start. Oh, keyboard still on the desk. No one noticed. <laughs> That's Just, not professional. Let's throw that in the floor. We'll like start the professionals with, we are. We'll start with robots, and I am impressed with this robot. Yeah, I think this one's actually kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, Berkeley's two-armed robot hints at a new future for warehouses. So, it's hard to make a hand for a robot to pick up stuff, so this robot has two different kinds of hands for picking stuff up. It's got suction cup on the right, pinchers on the left. That, that seems like such a, a good like system so it can pick up the things it needs to. That being said, it doesn't have great control. Like, it'll just pick things up. Like, it'll pinch it and then just kind of fling it, whether they, or not it has it or not. They trained it with uh, AI, though. So, I mean, it's got like a 90% success rate picking things up just without... Yeah. Like, but the great thing about it is they didn't train it by with the AI by actually, like, letting it do things. Simulation. It simulated its own existence <laughs> until it got good, <laughs> which is just... That's some next-level robot stuff that we can't compete with. Somebody should re reimagine the Matrix as that, where it's like the human race is in a simulation until it gets to a point where it won't destroy itself, and then it's <laughs> continued to allow it to exist. So like, congratulations, you're, you're a member of the human race that is not hell-bent on self-destruction. Well, that wouldn't be a great movie because there's no risk. Like, mm. yeah, every time no, we wipe no ourselves conflict. out, you just start over. Well, it is, I mean, there is kind of a psychological conflict there because it's like, oh, do I go back inside the machine or do I, you yeah. know, is this... Sure, why not? I don't know. Also, going back and like, look at our escapism. Yeah. We destroy ourselves as a way of entertainment. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you, I don't remember how long ago it was, but we talked about the robot hotel. The big thing I remember about it was that they had dinosaurs. Yeah. yeah. And it that's was bizarre. Like, why do they have dinosaurs? Well, it turns out maybe a lot of their choices were weird. <laughs> the world's first robot hotel has massacred half of its robot staff. Now, I thought that this would be like a lot of changes. No, they just got rid of the in-room robot assistants and like one of the uh, uh, the concierge robot. But that was 50% of their robots. Yeah. yeah. So. I mean, the ones in the rooms, they registered like snoring as talking. So it would like wake up and be like, hello, I didn't understand what you were saying. Yeah. And like the person would be like, I'm asleep. I don't and the know. luggage carrier bots couldn't do stairs. Yeah. <laughs> so. Oops. Yeah. So. Not ideal. Well, but, you know, when we're not getting rid of robots, we're learning to live more peacefully with them. And that's what Amazon is working on. <laughs> Amazon has created a vest that alerts robots to a human's presence. So if you enter the warehouse without wearing a vest, say a burglar, you're going to get run over by one of these, like, pallet lifting robots. These are the ones that go under the shelves yeah. and lift the shelf up and then bring the shelf to you. It looks like a Roomba on steroids. Like, that's daddy Roomba. They could really mess up your ankles. Yeah. <laughs> But if you look, it's more of a belt, actually. So it's like this thing, and I imagine this pouch is part of it, and then it's got some suspenders to hold it because it's heavy. But, it, uh, it looks yeah. kind of like she's wearing cyberpunk face paint, too, but, you know, it's cool. Oh, yeah. Maybe. That's what I, I like to imagine. That's just <laughs> like be, That might be her highlighter, like if she put on makeup that that's morning. A, that's the dried, crusted tears because she hasn't <laughs> had a bathroom break in days. <laughs> that's a joke from earlier episodes of the news not this week but in the past she's just she's covered in urine <laughs> and she's, she's trying to hide her, her pants are baggy and I've, hanging because they're sagging full of liquid I think we've got a preview of like the ninth or 10th generation Amazon warehouse robots in our next story although that's not what it's about do you think they'll be Gundams yes uh. giant Gundams <laughs> look it's the new it's Amazon warehouse ro no it's like Two men have been arrested for Gundam fraud. This can only happen in Japan. How many picks per minute you think he's capable of? Many, many, many more picks per minute. I don't know. Than he's got thing. those big hands. A smash per minute, maybe. <laughs> so this guy goes around to uh, conventions and stuff. You know, he's like a, a PR thing. He's he's a statue, but he does he quote unquote things. transform. So he lights up and he open. I guess these vents open up. It's like Super Gundam. I don't I don't know the Gundam Lord. You guys? No, know. I never watched it. But anyway. Um, it's not the robot necessarily that is the story here. It's what the robot people did to the robot creator. <laughs> they, they demanded a payment, but they were trolls. They were trolls. 
Well, I don't know if that was trolling necessarily. There were thieves. Yeah. Is what that's the word for those fraudsters. They were like, "You need to pay us extra money because reasons," and the company was just like, "Okay, sounds good." But by us, they meant Namco Bandai. Yeah, yeah. Representatives. But they pocketed of, the money. Yeah, they, yeah. And they did that a bunch of times before they got caught. So, but they did get caught. <laughs> Finally, it was so much they called somebody and said, "We gotta stop this." And it's like, stop what? What are you talking about? Now, this next robot, Krista was super excited about. I was. I was thinking this was going to be a lot cuter than it turned out to be. But then she immediately (laughs) turned against it. She now hates it. Delivery drones to use bird-inspired legs to jump into the air. So you're thinking, like, oh, it'll be cute, like, little bird jump. Like, you see them in, like, the parking lot, little sparrows and stuff. No. No. This thing Uh, is horrific, and we scroll down and you look at it. Really? I mean, I wasn't as terrified as she was. It's the uh, is it this this is this the bird box challenge that I've heard so much about? No, no, look oh, at it! Oh, oh, it freaks! Look at that! It is. There's something very insect like about it. That's why I don't like it. I yeah. think because it reminds me of uh, cave crickets. Yeah, sprickets. Uh, a cricket is a good example of it. You know, you go to smash it and it just listen, comes right back up at you. Listen to that dubstep. <laughs> oh, don't play again, video. No, oh, but it stop. wants to. So let's let's take a look at this thing. The cool thing about this is not so much the jumping legs. It's these uh, over-the-wing jets. So it turns out when you use these over-the-wing jets, the propulsion is coming directly from the engine rather than the air moving over the wing. So you don't need, you don't need that forward motion to take off. All you need is a little jump. So, hey. A little jump. Yeah, like a giant. Some super legs. Is it, is, it is a cool thing. I just didn't expect it to be so creepy. I'm imagining, like... You know, the UPS delivery truck of the future where these like swarm out from the top of it. And then the very next year or the year after, there's the automated law enforcement truck. That's just the repurposed UPS truck that has a lot more of those with guns. (laughs) Well, I don't (laughs) think they do kind of like maybe like a locust swarm like over your city. I don't think they would be good for those kind of drones because they can't hover. Oh, yeah. They have to be moving. They'd have to strafe. (laughs) Whereas with a rotor drone, you could just float and shoot. (laughs) <laughs> it's gonna be a lot easier. And our next robots much are cuter. Also mimicking an animal and uh could also be abused by law enforcement. Yes. Continental. Look at that. There's little delivery dogs that are deployed from some sort of delivery dog van thing. What a terrible layout for a This is yeah, this is the most bizarre layout. It looks even weirder when you're in full screen, but, but like, here they are. They're little dogs and they they're carrying the, the boxes on their back. I wonder what they would do with a little tiny box. It's probably a box within a box. Yeah, that's what I would think. <laughs> and then here's the uh here's the truck. Here's the, the dog truck. It's cute in itself, right? Yeah. You ever get one of those packages where like it's a big package but all the weight is in like one corner of the box? I wonder how they would struggle with that. You think you could compensate? Well, it would have to be tethered somehow, too, right? Because somebody's going to grab it and run, or the wind is going to grab it. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of unanswered questions about the dog robots. (laughs) They're very cute, though. Much cuter than the bird. It is a cool idea because, uh, for some reason, on their website, they don't show a picture, but these are uh, like the Boston Dynamic robots. So they can get upstairs and open doors and break into your house. (laughs) (laughs) Give you nightmares. Nice. Uh, this next robot, um, I was I thought it was a cool idea, but then it has a very limited scope of work. I think. It really does. <laughs> this is retail. It's like nearly 500 robots powered by retail business services and Badger Technologies hit the floor at a hold Del Hayes, USA's giant Martins and Stop and Shop brands. That's a terrible headline. That is a terrible headline. This robot basically just watches out for puke. And spills. And spills. And then it doesn't clean them up, which is kind of what you think it would do. It actually just alerts a human worker and <laughs> well, stands there and looks. It doesn't have hands. How can it clean them up? Well, I was thinking maybe it could hoover over yeah, it. It could be like a wet vac. Maybe. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. But no, yeah. he just, his giant googly <laughs> eyes stare at you. Oh, we had a question. Go back and show him the, the picture of him again. All right, yeah. So I think this looks like buck teeth. <laughs> Krista thinks this is the nose and this is the mouth. Yes, and that's your engagement challenge this week to tell me I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Nah, I, don't, I think it works better because he, he looks, with the googly eyes, he looks extra stupid with the, the teeth here. I think Futurama ran about 10 or 15 years too early because there would be no end of jokes that Futurama could get out of that robot. 
Now, this is our one design story. Yeah. I'm just going to say I don't like it. I, I don't care for it either. This is Slack, which is a project management system. Um, we've used it a little bit here. but well, it's more Pro of a chat. Yeah. yeah. It's IRC on, on, that's had a lot of modifications. And, yeah. And this logo is so sort of bland and uninspired. This is the new one. I'm kind of disappointed they didn't keep the plaid. I thought the plaid was a nice, even if they just kept it as an element, but they, they didn't even keep it in like any of the elements. They talk about the old logo being super problematic on anything other than a white background. Well, that's true. But like they could have done, they could have kept it so it still worked in one color here or like, but this is just, it kind of loses a lot of the character of the original, I think. If they're worried about this, they're making entirely too much money. Yeah. Also the hashtag. Oh, and they, they, they hired Pentagram. Which, like, you guys probably don't know who Pentagram is, but that's, like, a really big design firm, and they have, like, history-making designers working there. So, like, that was not cheap for them to hire Pentagram to do that, and it was not that good of a redesign. But plus the hashtag is, like, so, you know, relevant. And ubiquitous, and yeah. yeah. And now it's just, like, this weird blob. Although, I guess, in the IRC scope, like, it's not, because IRC used to be hashtags like that's what you used it for and then twitter came around and no one remembers <laughs> <laughs> they all forgot about dre <laughs> and now nice. it's been distanced from that even more by this rebrand and now it's just a blob for a logo yeah oh, well. even if it does reproduce well at different scales what can you do well the thing that drives me crazy about slack is uh when you use it in a browser it does both the click 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 sound and the windows notification yeah Oh, that's annoying. It makes me angry at the people that keep typing. It's like, stop typing. <laughs> I don't Do want it. to hear your notifications anymore. We don't use Slack too much in our office. Well, we do on some projects. Yeah. yeah. So distracting. Fortnite has conquered the world. And they've captured the minds of the children, which is what you have to do if you want to you know, be the next generation's leader. But they have a problem. <laughs> Fortnite bug gave hackers access to millions of player accounts, researchers say. So if you just saved your credit card, you could have had charges and then the stuff that you bought would disappear to another account. So, you know, it had laundering services built right in. This is criminal's dream. It's amazing. And they haven't really gone into how many people this affected or like what all exactly. Well, potentially it was everybody. Yeah. I don't know how, if, if it was used much in reality. They just, it was potential. <laughs> Epic is awful tight-lipped about it. Uh, they probably don't know. Because yeah, I mean, you know, when people complain, it's like, hey, I lost my dance move. <laughs> they probably don't elevate that to... <laughs> High priority <laughs> immediately. <laughs> but here is a security alert that is a high priority. I have a Surface. This affects me. Yeah. I think it's going to affect pretty much everybody. <laughs> this Wi-Fi firmware bug affects laptops, smartphones, routers, and gaming devices. A list of impacted devices include the PS4, Xbox One, Samsung Chromebooks, and Microsoft Surface devices. This headline fails to report that, OMG, anybody that is in your immediate area can completely take over your device, corrupt memory, install malware, because of bugs in the firmware of your wireless card. And it's... Uh, Marvel Avastar is what this security researcher has targeted, but it's actually anybody that uses this real-time OS that's running on the hardware, because the real-time OS is the thing that has the bugs. I imagine Mar everything Marvel probably has that, right? I mean, that's, probably a lot of stuff, yeah. yeah probably so. more chipsets than just that, too. So, yeah, that's, that's disturbing. Now, the good news is this researcher did not release his code but he kind of gave them a pretty good paint by number yeah on what to do here so stay tuned for that <laughs> yeah this is like the word 700 million to 1.5 billion devices are affected and i guarantee you all of those are not going to get patches i think microsoft's going to patch the original uh surface pro 2 the, yes i don't think anybody Abs i don't think they will absolutely because <laughs> they care <laughs> well they might after they get sued but that'll be what, two years down the road? Yeah, support for that ended like two years ago. So, I mean, they're just... They're not going to support their uh, mobile phones. No. Those sure. are garbage. There's, no. oh, there's a lot of phones that are over... that are like on that two to three year old mark that are now mm. going to be garbage. They're not going to get any updates. But they definitely have Wi-Fi. Wow. That's going to be bad. Well, the mobile phone uh, malware people are actually getting more and more clever. Now, this guy was a security researcher, but it could have just as easily been a malicious actor... And they are not only getting better at the malware, they're getting really good at hiding it. <laughs> Evading detection. Ars Technica brings us the headline, Google Play Malware used phone's motion sensors 
to conceal itself. Now, they weren't hiding in the motion sensors, but the malware would check to see if the phone has data coming from the motion sensor in order to determine what to do. Because if you're on a simulated phone, you want the malware wants to hide, and that's what it would do. Now in your phone emulators, you have to have constant motion being simulated as well. That's hilarious. Seems like an easier way to detect stuff, like just look for the Google Play apps, because you don't normally have those on an emulator. Yeah, but that would be easier to fix once they figured it out. It's a, it's going to be an arms race. What a time to be alive. Uh, well, listen, uh, I think the pendulum is swinging to, toward the malware makers right now. <laughs> yeah. And another thing that they're going to get, a nice little pr- present for them, a nice little uh, President's Day present. Well, no, it's MLK. That's this week. MLK Day. Yes. And uh, they're getting a nice big dump. <laughs> Over 87 gigabytes of email addresses and passwords have been exposed in the Collection One dump. So, yeah, it's so 773 million unique email addresses and just under 22 million unique passwords have been found. They've been added to Have I Been Pwned, which is the website that Troy Hunt runs, which is an amazing service. You should check that out. You can plug in your email and it will tell you if your email has been compromised. You can plug in your password and it will tell you that your password has been compromised. And I know it sounds crazy, it's like enter your password on a website. The website doesn't actually send your password anywhere. It does some computations on your password in JavaScript and uh, it doesn't, they don't even know which hash you checked. It checks a whole bunch of, like it asks for a range basically. But they can use that to determine if your password has been seen before, which I would recommend that you do because Good lord, everything has been compromised. This wasn't just one source. This was like the criminal enterprises collection from a whole bunch of different breaches, but there were breaches that we don't know about and haven't seen before. It's bad news. Well, one way that the malware makers or the, you know the bad actors get to you is by injecting JavaScript. They'll get uh, an ad account And a trusted website will let them run ads, and they'll put the JavaScript in the ad, deliver a payload, and the latest criminal... Wait a minute. It's It's not not criminals. It's GoDaddy. Tech Republic says that GoDaddy is injecting site-breaking JavaScript into customer websites. And the fix is that you go to your GoDaddy control panel and opt out of this cloud marketing nonsense. You beg them to remove it. That's (laughs) basically what you... (laughs) Please, sir. (laughs) Please don't add JavaScript to my webpage. (laughs) Of course, uh, the, the JavaScript doesn't always break the site. It's actually a rare occasion. Most of the time, it's just silently running, tracking your users for GoDaddy, which is disgusting. So yeah, GoDaddy hosting, maybe, maybe you don't want to do that. Now, if you are one of these uh, security-minded people, you want to do some white hat stuff, you want to hack for good, but you want to gain from it, well, how would you like to gain a car? <laughs> Tesla is entering the Model 3 in the Pwn to Own, one of the world's toughest hacking contests. So yeah, hack the Model 3 and you win it. I'm going to make a level 1 prediction. The Mm -hmm. Tesla Model 3 is going to be hacked in under 5 minutes. Can I like, uh, can I do the prices right thing and say 6 minutes? No, no, you say 501. (laughs) Oh yeah, 501. Actually, he said under 5. You take 5. Yeah. Yeah. 5 plus. (laughs) I think it'll take a little longer than that, but I think they probably will... Now, it does have to be uh, fairly severe. You yeah. can't just, like, I don't know, maybe uh, turn on one of the blinkers. You know, yeah. That's not going to be enough. You're going to have to do something. But every system of the car is on the menu yeah. because the whole thing is you know, a giant computer. Well, you can't steal the car, but the driver also can't turn off the driver's side heated seat. So it doesn't matter if it's 150 degrees in your middle of Arizona, you're getting a heated seat. That could be like a ransomware thing, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Well, the Alexa. Of course, we've covered that the Alexa is always listening. But what if you you simply have to have an Alexa in your life, but you can't stand that? There is a solution. Christy, you should get this for your mom. See, I'm almost positive we did a story like this last week, but I don't think it was this exact one. It's uh, This is the first truly great Amazon Alexa and Google Home hack. So this is a 3D printed computer that sits on top of your home assistant. And it feeds noise into the microphone, and it listens for you. But this this thing is not on the internet. It's not internet connected in any way. And so it listens for you to turn it off so that then the home assistant can hear you. So the home assistant cannot be listening at all times. Comments, am I going crazy? Did we cover this? We did not, Krista. We, Maybe we, we talked about it at lunch. I think we, we talked about it at lunch. But yeah. This is a great Photoshop, and Fast Company must have done this. Yes. 
Because that's not what it looks like. That's a mushroom. Yeah. Chris, what kind of mushroom is that? I don't know. You're a, you're a mushroom expert. Not for random mushrooms they put on a stock photo. It could be from anywhere in the world. <laughs> so this is what it actually looks like. And actually, it's just a little Raspberry Pi built thing with a speaker in it. Uh, you can make your own. You can't buy them, actually. But you can make your own. And that's a cool solution. Too. It is. It really is. It's a clever, awesome solution. I should have thought of this because it's like it's so clever and brilliant. But, but it's it is, so nice. But it's at the same time, amazingly simple. Yeah. It's amazingly simple. And it's also... Uh, you're you're very sure that it's working and you can audit it at any time like you can be like hey google and then it doesn't respond at all and it's like yeah it's still working yeah if you set your own key phrase to yeah. wake that thing up the google doesn't know about it. so it's like adversarial technology like one piece of technology versus another piece of technology which is exciting let them fight well you know what i i, I moved out of my apartment recently moved into a house and i was cleaning everything out i actually found my old Razor phone. Oh, razors were so cool. I never had one. My cousin Katie did. You're not a sentimental person. Did you keep it or throw it away? Oh, I threw it right away. Oh. The meth heads have it. Did you have funny. a Did you have a gray one or did you have a pink one? Silver. Yeah, pink was the the hot color pink at my uh, Why would I my high pink school. One? Well, the new story is. It's back. Or well, it will be back. <laughs> it will be back. Well, we've got, I mean, Circuit Breaker has Motorola's Razors returning as a $1,500 folding smartphone. And then they have a stock photo of like the ancient one. I imagine it's going to be full screen, right? Like, there's certainly not going to be a keypad on the I, new one. I feel like Sony or somebody did one that was like two screens like that. But I mean. But I think it's going to be uninterrupted screen. Like the hinge is just going to be foldable LCD, right? Like that's that the, that's technology. the expectation, but I don't know. We don't know yet. Yeah, but 15, are you willing to pay fifteen hundred for it? Fifteen hundred is for that nostalgia. See, what's the most expensive uh, iPhone? Like twelve? Yeah, it's like twelve, thirteen hundred. So you're going to go over the super flagship iPhone? Well, no, I'll take that back. I think there might be an iPhone now that has like a terabyte of storage or something crazy like that. It's probably over uh, more expensive than that. Engagement challenge. We don't care. Yeah. Like I don't. Well, like I, I have a phone. Buy this. You don't know. I could look it up. We could literally <laughs> look it up right now. And we don't care. You. We've already. I mean, you've already gone to the iPad. Can you take the shame? <laughs> I'm going to a razor. <laughs> Paying fifteen hundred. But the razor, though, it's. Can I get the? I only want to know if I can get the pink one. Also, you don't even have good internet. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> you're so cheap. There is no chance you're buying that phone. No, I am not. I am so frugal. But frugal. there is one thing that you will be doing, which is watching this movie. I will watch this movie, <laughs> Jared. Oh, oh, oh! Look what you've done. Oh, you broke oh it. no! Fixed. <laughs> to a biopic with Nicholas Holt to get summer 2019 release date. I don't watch movies in theaters. I probably will watch this one because I'm a nerd. And Does this, this look anything pandering. like him? I don't. I don't know. I haven't seen a lot of pictures of Tolkien when he's young. I didn't care about this until I saw that um, Miles O'Brien is going to be in it. I bet it'll be good. I hope it'll be good. So he did have an interesting life because he was in uh, World War One. Yes, right? he was in the cavalry. And he was an orphan. Yeah. He was originally from South Africa and then moved to Britain. Oh. I wrote a paper about oh, him. Just like Elon Musk. When I was in middle school. <laughs> Although Elon Musk was not a poor orphan. He was a millionaire child, wasn't he? Yeah. All the other girls in my class wrote about Princess Diana. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was a big paper uh, yeah. thing. That I remember uh, we had to do a paper and uh, you weren't allowed to choose who you got. They assigned you a random celebrity and I got OJ. Oh. <laughs> But that was an eye-opening. We got to pick who we did. <laughs> it was pre-murder. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, the government shutdown has left people with a lot of time on their hands. And perhaps a little something else. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a good segue, but also disgusting. <laughs> well, the headline was Pornhub reports traffic increase amid partial government shutdown. And a 12% increase in uh, Washington, D.C. specifically. Hmm. The uh, the curious. spikes the spikes that they observed that were really outliers was the like noon time. <laughs> so, you know, about you know, when they woke up. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, you're staying up late because you don't have anywhere to go, and you wake up around eleven, maybe get a little breakfast, ease into the day. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, these are not quite tech stories, but we have a triumvirate triumvirate of. Wonderful animal stories <laughs> that will warm your heart. And first, we will start with this 
lovely alligator. <laughs> an emotional support alligator <laughs> makes new friends at an assisted living facility. This Look, story did warm my heart. He looks so happy. He's very happy. Look at him. In a, you gotta find the video. The loving embrace. Oh, was it in the video? I think it was in the video where he's like hanging out with people and like going down the hallway. Oh, so yeah, scroll on back. The owner talks about like petting him between the eyes and like he likes to be petted. And Look! Yeah. Look how the, happy. Oh, there it is. Oh, there's there's yeah. the one where she's, <laughs> she's, she's just like burping him like a baby. Him. So this guy, uh, this alligator was in Florida and it was going to be killed because uh, they were going to build a building where the he alligator lived. family the swamp. was. This guy rescued it, and now he just takes it around and lets people love on it. Which is, what could go wrong? That's a bizarre one, but apparently it's very—it's like a little dog. It follows them around at home, and it's never bitten anyone. So until it tries to do a death roll with Granny's arm, <laughs> that would, which would snap right off. Yeah, just clean off. Because <laughs> it's mostly hollow from the <laughs> calcium deficiency and just paper like skin, like paper mache. So just. Just tear it right off. It's but, probably the shoulder. But they do look very happy petting the alligator. I would, I would try it. I would, yeah. I'd pet it. Now, Krista is specifically somebody who knows the terror of pets with socks. Yes. Rue loves socks. Rue will steal socks all day, all night. She took some yesterday and tore them up, and I had to throw them away. I'm in a sock crisis at my house. So, but <laughs> you might be thinking to yourself, so what? Why can't Rue enjoy socks? Well, this story's why. <laughs> this zoo has issued a warning after a sea lion has puked up a toddler's sock. That's, there it uh, is. That's disgusting. <laughs> it's been inside of a sea lion. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, some stupid parent. Oh, toddler parents are the worst. Just somehow the toddler lost their sock in the uh, sea lion the enclosure. Time. And the sea lion said... Yes, I'll eat this. <laughs> and the parent wasn't even like, hey, zoo staff, uh, by the way, there's right. an extra sock in the enclosure. It's crazy that, yeah, she didn't, like, you wouldn't have noticed. I mean, I don't know what the enclosure looks well, I, like. No, but... I could see a kid pulling off their own sock and, you know, like, maybe just putting the shoe right back on. <laughs> Although, toddlers are terrible at putting on shoes. I yeah, hate I would watching think... kids try to put on shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan also hates, like, watching kids try to eat Cheerios. Cheerios. Oh, and they're like... that is repulsive. <laughs> See, I think that's cute, but Ugh. yeah, they, someone should have told the zoo staff, "Hey, my kid dropped a sock." Assuming they noticed, probably just too ashamed. Maybe right. they'll uh, maybe they'll redesign the enclosure if that's like a common reason. Nah, but that's like an open air animal. I mean, you but I mean, like, could you design it in such a way that there's like, like if there's railing, maybe put like a, a lip so that way if someone drops a sock, it gets caught in the lip and not. A toddler would just throw it. I don't know. Oh, they're horrible little creatures. <laughs> the sea lions are the toddlers. <laughs> Speaking of offspring, one frog that was destined to never have any has a new hope. The BBC News article brings us the story of the world's loneliest frog getting a date. This frog has been in an aquarium for 10 years, 10 years plus, and they thought he was the last or Look one of the last of the beard. species. They, they found of, some more. They kind of got the hypnotoad eyes. <laughs> <laughs> what if he's like do you think they told him well here's the thing like I would tell him I'd be like you need to get yourself in shape buddy. yeah they did they they posted a, a video on Twitter and said let Ro his name's Romeo Aww. and they were like let Romeo know that Juliet is coming but here's the hilarious thing about it Romeo's been in captivity for 10 years <clears throat> he's become very docile he's let himself go so they talk about how like you can handle him, and he doesn't swim around much. And even when they put the food, the live food, in there with him, he's just like, eh, he doesn't really chase it. Juliet, his soon-to-be mate, is the most aggressive frog they've ever encountered. <laughs> so it's going to be interesting when they put them together and see, see what happens. I think we need to do a follow-up story on this. <laughs> Juliet will have murdered Romeo. That's what I'm kind of afraid she of. She apparently has the highest attempted escape rate of all the frogs. <laughs> so, yeah. It will maybe, be, they'll mill it, maybe it'll be like opposite tracks. That's what they're hoping for. They literally said they hope that opposites attract. Maybe they'll spoon together. Follow up from level one is that something bad has happened. I don't think they will spoon. I think they will frog. <laughs> well, they could spoon in our next video. Uh, uh, oh yeah, well, that, was that? Were you? I was trying to do a segue. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. I, <laughs> that's fine. I totally missed it. <laughs> Eat food and watch Netflix simultaneously with this fork and spoon equipped smartphone case. It's the worst GIF ever. This is yeah. <laughs> this is like cursed images. <laughs> So that's the fork, I guess. It looks like she's stabbing something. Could, I mean, where, you remember the phones that had like the little built-in kickstand? Like, just set that up and put it on they're the desk. They're like, yeah. No, no, they're like, listen, make this look natural, and she—that's what she came up with. Well, what else could she do? But also, like, 
The fork is perfect. It's a functional fork without the phone. Yeah, why do you need the phone attached? Just pick up the fork. And you can't put that in your pocket with them attached. I think it does... Now, I don't know. Like, you think those no. mount? It doesn't look like The world's most it. amazeballs innovation, in quotation marks. <laughs> amazeballs. This, this page was a publicity stunt by some ad agency. That, and, we're, and we're giving them And publicity. we're feeding it. Well, that's why, it's, that's why it's in the nonsense section. We've got to just... If you buy this, that's... Whatever ad agency did this, stop wasting your client's money. <laughs> like, and invest in proper IT and website infrastructure. If you buy this, or Kickstarter, or whatever they're going to do, the moment you that transaction clears after you press that button, I want, you, I want you to come back to this video and press that unsubscribe button. Because <laughs> we don't want you here. We don't want you here. Absolutely Leave the forum. Have your unacceptable forum. Unacceptable for you to be here. <laughs> That's your engagement challenge. And perhaps... Disengagement, I should say. Now, that person is probably too stupid to ever have gainful employment. But if they're young enough... One thing they might be able to be are blood donors. <laughs> Business Insider says this controversial startup that charges $8,000 to fill your veins with young blood to defeat aging now claims to be up and running in five cities across the U.S. You know what I couldn't figure out? Do they give you the full uh, five pints or is it just like one? No, it's like a transfusion type thing. So they take your old disgusting blood out. Your old person All of blood. it or just like one or two pints? Well, the, the full $8,000 worth. Well, it's one session. They could be one pint or five. I don't know. Hmm. The other question is, how much do you get paid as a teenager? And how? What? That's what I wonder. You'd have to be eighteen to do this, right? Because mm -hmm. that's a business transaction. Yeah. So this is like it's all barely eighteen blood. <laughs> it could be like eighteen to twenty-five. <laughs> no, because it has to be teenage blood. I think they just said. Did they say? No, you want teenage? Blood? Well, listen, I'm not paying eight thousand dollars for some early twenty. <laughs> They've already five been out partying. Blood? Yeah. That's, no, thank you. No, it's, that's got to be fresh eighteen-year-old blood. Yeah, well, it looks like you never ever had a blood transfusion and from a teenager. Personally, I would prefer virgin blood. I feel like that's going to be a lot more potent. That's probably a thing in China. Yeah. So, do you have the option to drink it for like ten thousand? Because that's what I would do. I'm sure you could negotiate. Yeah. Can, Can I just get just a little fill, bit as a sip, like a you shot? Fill a tub with this. <laughs> Listen, Elon Musk. It's like money is no object. Just fill a whirlpool and turn those jets on high. They I'm are unironically calling it ambrosia. Uh, <laughs> just like the ambrosia in RimWorld, which PGP is currently playing through on Twitch. Twitch.tv Twitch. slash Team PGP. Did you guys play that Friday? We did. Yeah, we did. Oh, man. Got some new colonists. I've got a new uh, marriage. <gasps> is that our Nomian? I don't remember who Seriously? it was. <laughs> hey. I follow all the relationship drama in the colony. I really feel like the developer of that needs to add more, like, like when we lose a colonist, like, you should be able to build a monument or a statue or something. I mean, them. you can get the nice oh. jade sarcophagus. Oh, yeah, and, but, you know. By the way, just a little tease for what, what you're missing if you're not watching that stream. Ty now has a bionic arm. And a new kidney, oh. or no, new lung, a new oh. lung. Yeah. And uh, was it intrepid techie? I think intrepid techie has a uh, bionic spine. A new spine. He's Did Daedalina and him fall in love? I don't remember. Was it Daedalina who was falling in love? We name all of the people after people in our chat too, so that could be you. <laughs> we were mostly focused on you know repairing their horrible deformities. <laughs> well, one thing that uh, we've we've seen that even government employees love. Is porn. <laughs> and I don't think that this new proposal is going to catch on because of that. <laughs> this lawmaker wants to tax porn users to help fund the border wall. Yeah, this is not, it's like, I mean, what? A, uh, that's not, that's not that even. Is, that's a great story. That's a photo. telephone line. Who uses <laughs> but, a telephone yeah, I was going to say that's the, but it, you know, they probably, they were like, go find me one that's like extra phallic. <laughs> <laughs> it's girthy. You need a girthy cable. <laughs> That's a word that's hard to use. <laughs> <laughs> to not have certain connotations. So yeah, this person wants every device that can access porn, which is everything with a screen that's been manufactured <laughs> in the last 10 years, to be restricted from porn somehow at the hardware level. What an idiot. And you have to pay $20 to unlock the ability to get porn. And you're thinking like... Per device. What is this guy's credentials? He doesn't even have a blue check on Facebook. <laughs> Can't trust him at all. You can't trust him. In fact, well, he's a GOP lawmaker, so there you go. And so I don't know if it's this guy necessarily or someone he's related to that's working <laughs> yeah, with this. They have but, a long uh, list of things he's done on this article. He's been addicted to porn and tried to sue Apple because they 
enabled him to be addicted to porn. Uh, he tried to marry his laptop. And we he actually sued, have the article he on He sued that. Utah. Yeah. Because they and wouldn't recognize his marriage. The link to that is insane. I think we covered that the first time like, around. Like, if you follow the links in this article, it's just... It's a rabbit trail of insanity. Yeah, I mean, you just go farther and farther down the rabbit hole of insanity, and you come up at later, and it's just like, this is... I can't... No amount of showering is going to wash the filthiness off of me, because this is... This is, like, one man's uh, insanity manifest in law. And it's like, is this... Do people not know this? Perhaps they should know this. Do we want this to be in the records of our and civilization? This, this yeah. is so often the case with lawmakers and the projection. <laughs> yeah. Because all of those like anti-gay lawmakers, all of them ended up in hotel rooms with male prostitutes. It was like a joke how that always happened. <laughs> and it's like, bro, not everybody is fighting it like you are. You know, Just let people live their lives. And it's like, no... No, there's something wrong with me. I've tried to marry my laptop. You've got to stop me. And but you know he'd pay the twenty dollars eventually. Yeah, he'd probably be the first yeah. guy to pay the twenty dollars. He needs therapy, not laws. Well, if, hey, speaking of Team PGP on Twitch, from time to time we've played Stellaris. Stellaris is an amazing game, but we never used this incredible mod. <laughs> Play Stellaris as the most evil alien race imaginable, HP printers. I love the eyes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it looks like the, the display is his angry little mouth. Yeah. As I recall, I reviewed that exact model of printer. <laughs> so here he is. Here they are. Now this, So you can play as robots in one of the more recent DLC updates to Stellaris. And this is a mod that creates a robot race of HP printers. <laughs> In this storyline, they have destroyed the Earth with a nuclear war. As they would. It's become a dead planet, and they must branch out into the galaxy and spread war. They are a warlike uh, race. They have a lot of plus damage and like quick fleet building, but they have one huge drawback as well. <laughs> Minus 25% leader experience because they've been repurposed. No, it's that was the, manufacturing. Maintenance. Oh, yeah, and really yeah. insanely Incre high maintenance. Increased maintenance because they're not built to last. It's crazy. Because they're HP printers. Someone's here. Someone's in the hallway making noise. <laughs> That's it for that us. That was the last story, though, so it's perfect timing.